This is Twit. So let's talk a little bit about these glasses. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I think this is another challenge in the industry right now is in order to do go- uh, augmented reality in the ways that we're, by the way, they look, they look fantastic on you. Uh, <laughs> oh, and they look, they look awesome like that too. That's great. Um, <laughs> In this world of, you know, this this emerging uh, field of augmented reality, for better or for worse, we jump to this, or at least I can speak for myself, I jump to this idea of like, when are we going to be a Terminator view? Like, when are we going to be yeah. down the line to where everywhere I look, you know, it's just augmented and maybe it's built into my glasses that are, are just my glasses, you know, instead of being a specialized type of glasses that you have to retrofit or whatever. So you have to make choices around the design of glasses. You guys uh, definitely took a different approach with the design of these glasses and how it works with the technology. Uh, so talk a little bit about your thinking there as far as the design of the glasses themselves. Well, as I said earlier, I've been in this space for quite some time and I've seen there's always a boogeyman around the corner that's going to come get you. And that's what everyone's afraid of. When I was at Valve, uh, Google Glass came out while we were there and people were running around like the sky is falling. Google's figured out how to make the ultimate immersive um, display and Google oh, Glass. Boy. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, there's <laughs> no, I actually no. like the Google Glass product. I, I mean, I, yeah. I think it was positioned in the market, unfortunate in an unfortunate way. Yeah, I have one in the other it. room. So I, I definitely have plenty of pictures of me wearing Google <laughs> Glass. So that happened. Um, <laughs> but the problem was um there's laws of physics you have to deal with, and there's cost you have to deal with this, and then there's physical form factor you have to deal with, and unfortunately, there's no perfect solution that's um, like the silver bullet that's going to give us the Terminator uh, glasses that are just perfect and totally immersive, because photons go where photons want to go, and you know things just haven't been miniaturized yet. Yeah. And so everyone, like every single year, there's this like scare of like, oh, I heard Apple's coming out with their super immersive AR glasses line. No, they're not. No, they're not. Like, are they somehow like putting a black hole in their optical system to bend light like faster than maybe. anyone else? But yeah, maybe <laughs> they, if anyone could, it would be Apple. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. Um but, you know, even clear back to the Valve days, like Google Glass came out, we ran off to the um, optics lab and a couple of us put a Google Glass, like, you know, mock up together that actually worked in like a couple of days. And we ran around like, this is what it's going to be like. And even after we showed people what it's going to be like, they're like, you know, no, they, they figured out how to make it work better. I'm like, no. Nope. But anyway, so <laughs> around our product, the thought we put into it is, we had several dimensions. It had to be super lightweight. It had to be glasses. So for your video viewers, saw I just slipped the glasses on. So you fold the arms out, slip them on. They're 85 grams. You know, anyone knows how to put them on because they're just glasses. You're not ratcheting things to your head. They have uh, multiple nose pieces depending on your face shape. They have, we actually made them bigger so that you could fit your eyewear behind them. So if you have prescription glasses, you can... Nice. change the uh, nose pieces around in different ways to make them work well with your eyewear. Um, we went with a white color for first. Um, we did a lot of, <laughs> so funny, everyone thinks that we're like fools for doing things, but it's like we put, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of research into like, what's the best shape? What's the best color? Or what's the ergonomics need to be? Like we made them white because it's the not the, the least polarizing of any color out there. Totally. So they'll be approachable by grandma, grandpa, the grandkids, women, men. Um, and they kind of look like Elton John glasses. They're they cool. do. That's, that's, I'm happy you <laughs> said that. That's kind of where my mind went as well. But we just, we were, we just made it proud. We, you know, there's certain things we couldn't shrink the electronics infinitely small. So we're like, okay, we'll just make parts of it proud. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, uh, Full um, telephony was built in so you could speak with your friends over long distances. So it has speakers and microphone built into it that don't cover your ears. So you can sit around the table with your friends and talk to them and talk to your friends remotely. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the various tracking schemes, you know, we've set that up so that it works really good for telepresence. Like you can track your hand and you can be talking to people and uh, they can see your hands moving through this virtual space because we really want it to feel 
comfortable and like you're together instead of being isolated from the world. I mean, the biggest thing for me is like, I want to see my beer and pizza when I'm, you know, <laughs> playing my games. So like VR was out. That's why right. I've never been a fan of VR. Um, cause I'm a gamer. I'm a social gamer. Um, who even put pizza in our, our video to emphasize that <laughs> and they wouldn't let me put beer in though. It is, it is pizza compatible. <laughs> Uh, it is pizza compatible. <laughs> and, and it does, it does the trick now. Now one thing, um, that is different here. And by the way, this is definitely a step up from the cast AR headset that I saw, uh, in person, but you know, that was definitely much more of a prototype. This is obviously a very finished product here. This is basically, well, probably better for you to describe the technology here, but it's basically projecting down from your eyes onto this reflective service. How, how does that work so that everybody gets their own view and, and all that stuff? Yeah, let me get all sciency on it. Great. Uh, <laughs> so we have two HD projectors that are 110 degree field of view, so it fills the entire table with an image. And then we have two lenses in front of your eyes, and we actually have patents on this. Those lenses are super efficient. We get 85% of the light that strikes those lenses to go out and then return back to the user's eyes. So it oh, goes wow. out to the game board. The game board has this retroflective material. It takes all the light that strikes it and returns it back in the same direction. So that means that each user around the table gets their own unique view into this 3D space because light emitted from their glasses are going back to each user. And this has a bunch of virtues that, that much different than other types of AR systems that have fixed focus. I touched on it earlier. Because we have this projection system and because we can stop down the aperture on the projector, everything is in focus over the entire range. So if you jam your face into the game board, it's in focus. If you're leaning way back, like a couple meters away, it's in focus. So that does something that no one else can do. And our field of view just is absolutely mm -hmm. crushes everyone else as far as field of view. The limit is you need to use our game board, um, which is a nice trade off. You know, we we're able to reduce the cost. Like our base kit is two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Like we're a fraction the cost of anyone else, and triple, four times the field of view of anyone else. And uh, we've also done some uh, unique things with our tracking system. Way back when I worked at Valve, I'm like, this is going to be the future of tracking. It's going to be completely done in the headset. It's going to the images are going to be decoupled from the game engine coming off your PC or your phone. And then all the image stabilization is going to happen in the headset. So we actually take images over USB. So it needs to be USB super speed or USB-C. So the blue port or USB-C. Right. And send the picture comes up from the game engine into the headset. And then it gets upscaled to 180 frames per second. And then there's a tight loop inside the headset for tracking. So as you move around, it's updating at 180 frames per second and the image is um, stabilized and locked to the game board. So one of my favorite demos to show off like this innovation that we've done is that I'll actually have someone looking at the game board and I'll secretly turn off the game engine, let them sit there for four or five seconds and be like, you notice anything? And they're like, no. Like, oh, well, for the last four or five seconds, you haven't had any new images sent up to the headset. It's the headset's been doing all the tracking and keeping the image um, placed on the game board. And oh, wow. so that that makes it so flexible that we can run multiple headsets off one PC or um, one headset off of a pretty modest um, cell phone that has a USB-C connection. Right. And you don't have to, not like VR, where you have to have these brute force um, uh, systems, big macho beefy PCs that can maintain really high frame rate because, you know, we can we can tolerate 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, whatever your PC can do. That's awesome. And so if you're doing multiplayer, it's all plugging into the same machine or it, and, and so like a phone connection that would be exclusive to like a single player experience. Is that right? No, I mean, it's. Uh, Network gaming, so okay, so uh, so you could have like three yes, headsets at the same table, all with their own phone, uh, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Game. So uh, some of our third-party content providers are um, cross-platform, so you can run the game on PC or you can run it on the phone, and so you can have any combination of Got multiple it. headsets on one PC, and you just run multiple instances of the the game, and it does normal networking to synchronize the game. And then uh, if it's cross-platform, for instance, that can run on phone as well, then you can um, just 
some of your players could plug into a phone and then it's synchronized over um, network and there's nothing special about network gaming so there's um, it's just part of all these game engines.